A huge welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining us again. As always, if you haven't, please hit the subscribe button. It's helping me build the profile of the channel so as I can do more content for you with videos like this. Click the bell. It will notify you about all the latest videos that come out through the channel. And please, if you enjoy it, please give the video a thumbs up. I also really love hearing about all your views on the videos. Keep the comments coming and I'll try my very best to get back to you as promptly as I possibly can. This week, we're talking all things Enhanced Autopilot. And you might ask, why are we talking Enhanced Autopilot this week? Well, because this week I found out I'd got two weeks free Enhanced Autopilot on Tesla. You've probably found the same if you've just got yourself into a new Tesla. It seems what they're doing is offering two weeks uh, free Enhanced Autopilot, possibly to test their subscription basis, which we know is coming very, very soon from Tesla. So rather than paying the £3,400, which it costs you up front to get Enhanced Autopilot, you'll just pay a nominal monthly fee. We're yet to get details on what that will be. But to get us in the, the taster of uh, Enhanced Autopilot, they've given it us to try uh, and maybe also to see how the subscription uh, process actually works for them to see if they get people who are just going to go ahead and use it for a couple of weeks and see what the feedback's like. So it's given us a prime opportunity to show you Enhanced Autopilot. So throughout the whole video, we're going to be showing you all the various features. So several features that you get with Enhanced Autopilot are the Navigate on Autopilot, Auto Lane Change, Auto Park and Summon. And we're going to be showing you all of those features in this video and how we get on with them. So you'll be able to see real life practicality do they work or not? You may be wondering how Enhanced Autopilot works. Well, it uses the radar, the ultrasonic sensors around the car, the three cameras in the front windscreen, the two cameras on the front wings, the two cameras on the B pillars, and the camera at the rear in order to navigate its way along our UK highways here. So if you want to see how we get on real life with this Enhanced Autopilot, stick with the video as we show you how we've got on with each of the features over the last two weeks. One of the great features with Enhanced Autopilot is the summon function. Summon allows you to bring your car maybe in and out of a tight space in the garage, or maybe also out of a tight parking space if someone's parked very close either side of you and you can't get in through your doors, or you don't want to damage the doors. It's a really easy feature. So you simply go into the app on the homepage, click the summon button, and then you get two options, forward or reverse on smart summon, which we'll show you shortly in the video but we want to reverse the car here out of the garage. So I simply press my finger down on the reverse button. The car indicates that it's uh, connecting to the phone by putting the flashing the indicators and putting the reverse lights on and the headlights. As you can see, the car then gently reverses itself out of a tight spot for as long as you keep your finger on the button. The moment you release your finger off the button, then the car stops like so. Applying the handbrake and disengaging. Really, really easy and great for getting in and out of a tight space such as a garage. Now the other feature on someone is to actually move it forward. So we can do the whole thing in reverse. Maybe you come home, you don't fancy trying to get in and out of a tight space in a garage. Maybe you've got another car like we have here and you don't want to bash doors. You hold the forward button down. The car indicates it's moving in with that feature and it open, turns on the headlights and flashes the indicator. You've got to be very close to the car for it to work. I'm hoping my cameraman's going to shout out if we get too close to the other vehicles. But here you go, this is putting the car into a tight spot. Again, using the summer feature, you just hold your finger down or your thumb down on the forward function on the app and the car moves its way nicely and gently into the garage. And there you go, parked. One of the great features with Enhanced Autopilot is Navigate on Autopilot. This feature will, in theory, take us on and off the motorway and auto-navigate the lanes with some confirmation. And to do that, all we need to do is select our destination. So we're going to go to the superchargers today. And this should, in theory, tell us we can navigate on autopilot. So there you go, that's selected. If we don't select it, we turn, press that. And to reselect it, we press it again. So when it's blue, it's working. You see the car is now preconditioning our battery for fast charging to maximise the efficiency of the charge and to maximise the efficiency of the battery. And we're approaching the roundabout and we know it's not going to cope with the roundabout. So we'll disengage and we'll, uh, we'll enter the car 
onto the motorway going northbound. So it's telling us on the navigation that we're going to go all the way around. We're in the right lane here for joining the motorway to go northbound. It's telling us we've got 30 miles to go on an unnamed road, which is actually the M6. <laughs> Most of us know it. Auto steer temporarily unavailable here. And we know the speed limit is 60 miles an hour at the moment because we're in a construction zone. So let's just see how we get on. Looks like we're gonna have to merge onto the motorway ourselves here. Well, so we're now on the motorway. So we've engaged navigator on autopilot. As you can see, car still preconditioning the battery. It's asking for a lane change. I'm not sure why it's asking for a lane change because I am doing well below the speed limit. Um, we're gonna just up the speed limit to 60 because that's what the speed limit is. Although it's picked up 70 on the cameras, we are actually in a construction zone. So I'm gonna keep the maximum speed limit at 55. Car does still want to get out of this lane, but we've got a good distance from the car in front. We're doing the speed limit, so I don't understand why it's asking for us to move out of a lane. It's just asking me just to give a bit of a nudge to the wheel to let know I'm here. Oh, it wants us to go away from the cones, that's what it's telling us. It doesn't like driving near to the cones, so it's saying confirm lane change away from cones. So I think that might be what, what's bothering it. But we're going to wait till we're out of the construction zone, I think. And we're in a, uh, a, a national speed limit area. And we'll see what it does when we get um, out of the restricted speed area. So this is interesting to see though. So yeah, it's, it can see the cars around us. You can see, so the lane that shows in blue on the screen is the lane it really wants you to get into. I'm applying a little bit of pressure to the steering wheel and that is just to keep the uh, autopilot engaged, which you have to do. There you go, it's telling me to do it again there. And we're sitting in this middle lane. I'm just gonna up the speed to the uh, maximum speed limit for this section of the motorway. We're in a construction zone and uh, the maximum speed limit is 60. And I've got cars behind me wanted to come past um, see so the car thinks it's in a uh, 70 mile an hour area but it is actually a maximum speed of 60 at the moment as you can see we've got average speed cameras around it so that's a little disappointing but it hasn't picked that up uh, however it does seem to be coping with this autopilot navigate on autopilot this enhanced feature on the motorway it's slowing down for the car in front you do set all the distances you want the car to keep away from others. You can see it can see this van alongside us to our near side. And it is just nicely keeping away from that and keeping a good distance and it's to go over. So we're going to indicate to go into the fast lane. So all it wants to do was a confirmation on the indicator stalk to overtake this vehicle here. And it's done that quite nicely. And let's just see what it says about coming back into this lane. See if it wants me to do that. And when it wants me to do that, it seems quite happy with me being in the outside lane at the moment. So again, I'm indicating it's gonna go merge back over to this side. Again, I've not controlled that at all. All I've done is confirm the move with the uh, indicator. And that's all you do. This is the enhanced autopilot navigate on autopilot function. And it's allowed us to do now both move from the near side lane to the middle side lane, overtaking vehicles into the outside lane, overtaking and then indicated for the car to come back into the center lane. And all that, without any interjection by myself at all. I'm really quite impressed with this feature actually. I wasn't convinced it was gonna be as good as it is, but actually, if you're brave enough just to trust the car, once you've taken the confidence, it's asking me to change again. So again, I've indicated, check my blind spot myself, but I'm not steering that. That is doing that all automatically, all within the speed limit. 
it knows where the cars are using the eight cameras, the ultrasonic sensors. It's asking to come back across again for some reason. So, okay, we'll do that, not a problem. And the car's doing that on its own. It just said, uh, apply a bit of pressure to the steering wheel, which I've done. Now the car wants to come off in 4.7 miles. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the car's gonna cope with that. So um, is it gonna be able to navigate us off in time? Uh, some suggestion from others online, but actually what the car looks to do is to move you into the near side lane just a mile before. It's time to move um, over to the exit lane or the near side lane uh, at that point. We'll see if what autopilot does. So it's again telling us four miles to the exit and that's going to take us off in theory to the services to get that supercharge. But let's see how it copes so. So you do have to keep reminding the car that you're here and that you're in control. But it does seem to be working really rather well. It's keeping us in the centre lane Probably more so than I would drive myself. I probably would drive uh, more in the near side lane rather than in the centre lane. But, you know, we're going to trust the cameras that no, And this is the thing with enhanced autopilot. The car has actually got more eyes in different parts of the road than you could ever pay attention to using your mirrors. Uh, constantly observing through the uh, three cameras at the front, the camera at the rear, the two cameras in your side B pillars, and the indicator cameras, all monitoring all the time along with the ultrasonic sensors and the radar in the car. Let's see how it copes with this lorry. It's coming past this lorry quite nicely. And as you can see in the road, we're missing some of uh, the markings there, but the car coped just fine then. It can see all the cones to the near side and the entrance slip. Let's see what it says. There you go, it wants me to move back into the near side lane. So we've indicated the car's doing this all on its own. I'm not interjecting at all here. Apply a bit of pressure just so the car knows I'm here. Wants me to move across again. <laughs> Don't know why it wants me to move across again, but we'll do what it says. Oh. Confusing drivers behind. It seems to time out. If it hasn't been able to move across and make the maneuver, but it wants to, it seems to time out. And you can see when it is, the lane it wants you to move into, when it does want you to change lanes, it's highlighted in blue. So here we go, we've got another highlight in blue. So we're gonna indicate the car again, moving itself over, there you go. And the car's still in control. We're still navigating on autopilot, but it wants to come behind me. It hasn't seen this car here and it wants me to come across. So look, we'll indicate it's controlling, it knows it wants to come off, and I think that's why it's done that. It knows it wants to come off at the services in a minute. So we caused a little bit of confusion to that car behind them that you won't have seen as we braked to come in behind this car. But I think that's why it's brought us into this lane because we are approaching the services in just under a mile. I mentioned that. So let's see how it copes with this. We could end up flying straight past, but it's speeding up to get past this car on the side. And I reckon it's gonna tell us to get over into the near side lane, which should do. Here you go, half a mile off. There you go, it's telling us to get over. So again, no control by me. The car is steering itself, just so you can see that. And now let's see how the car manages the exit from the motorway here. I'm gonna be ready to apply brakes if I need to and take control. Here's the 300 yard marker. So it's telling me to apply a bit of steerage to the steering wheel. Let's see how it copes. It should be telling me to exit here. I'm gonna indicate 600 feet off, 400 feet off. Let's see how it copes. It's taking us off. Again, I'm not steering. It's applying the brakes now. And it's saying auto navigation complete. So that was interesting. Just coming off the uh, motorway there, it brought us into the slip road to come into the services and then it braked heavily for us. It got to the entrance of the services and then basically said, over to you. Now we're off the motorway and we're on a A road, dual carriageway on the A500 and um, we've engaged the autopilot and it seems to be coping well on the A roads as well, which we weren't necessarily expecting. Uh, you can see the camera's picking up the cars passing on our offside. 
The car's now indicating that it wants me to move over, so I've it confirmed a move with the indicator stalk, and it's automatically moved us across. So we're passing this uh, vehicle to our near side, and we're staying quite a distance behind the car in front. Keeping our hands on the steering wheel so the car knows we're here, but it's doing all the work, this is. I'm not actually steering or accelerating the car at all. So now asking to come back across. So I've indicated, give the car a little bit of a nudge with the steering wheel, just let it know we're there. And it's moved itself back across. Absolutely fine, it's picking up that cone there. It's actually doing a really good job of driving actually. Really very impressed with how well the car's coping with driving itself uh, on the A roads as well. So some routes it seems that um, navigate on autopilot is authorized for and some of the smaller roads it isn't at the moment see how it's going to cope with uh, traffic merging ahead it can see the car just merged ahead actually on the screen it's now asking me to indicate to get over so we will uh, we'll do as it's asking with a little bit of a nudge and the car is now keeping its pace nicely 69 69 miles per hour on this road doing a really good job actually of uh, navigating itself picking up all the cones it's asked me to move over to this lane uh, it's asking for a slight uh, appliance of force just to the steering wheel there so we've done that now i know we're going to be soon approaching a 50 mile an hour zone so it's going to be interesting to see how quickly the car adjusts to that it's asking to come back across now so we've indicated and i just given the wheel a little bit of a nudge uh, to confirm that we're happy to do that and the car has done all that maneuver itself now i've got cars moving in ahead let's see if it picks that up uh just coming in on the slip road here it's picked it up and it's asking me to move over now so again just uh, let the steering nudge the steering wheel just to let it know that we're here and it's managed that all on its own passing that car it's just merged on the near side now i'm going to expect the car to ask to move back across to the other lane as it is doing so we've given the indicator a nudge uh, along with the steering wheel and it's moved us back across nicely now we've got a van ahead and it's going to be interesting to see how it copes with this car on the outside lane now here's the 50 mile an hour speed zone i knew it wasn't going to cope with that quick enough so we've dropped the speed down manually and we'll reapply the autopilot we have to take over there. One of the things I'm noticing is that autopilot isn't picking up on the change of speed limit early enough. Where naturally, if you were driving, you would ease your foot off the accelerator as you approached the change in speed limit. Uh, but this, uh, the Tesla software isn't doing that. It's uh, waiting, flying up to the speed limit at 70 and then changing. Now, if you've got a speed camera van or something on the other side, see how it's going to cope here. This is going to be interesting. Is it going to slow down? Yes, it's slowed down to allow these cars onto the slip it hasn't asked me to move over so that's interesting see how it copes if it's going to speed up it's asking me to move over now so we'll uh, we'll change lanes so that was interesting it slowed right down for the cars coming in on the slip then uh, rather than asking to move over immediately so whether it had picked up the cars behind were too close on the outside lane there just asking for a bit of application of force to the steering wheel there We'll do that for it. It's coping quite nicely, passing these cars on the near side. We are in a 50 mile an hour speed zone. I've got cars approaching behind. So let's just see how it copes when it sees a space where it knows that car's behind and it wants to get over. Let's see how the car copes with that. So I've got traffic mounting behind. We are in the average speed zone though at the moment, so I'm reluctant to go any faster. Let's see how quickly it wants to get over now see if i'm gonna to have to take over and yes it's asking to move across so it can obviously see the cars behind so we'll move across for it so we'll see those cars come past us now on the offside car coat really well then it knew there were cars coming up behind and it looked for the space immediately as soon as it was safe to emerge back over to the near side now we've got a slip road coming up again oh yeah i can see a car coming up behind me vehicle that's just overtaking us has just cut in front of us so it's slowed the car down a couple of miles an hour video spend just to cope with that and navigate on autopilot coping really well there now we're approaching another slip i've got a van that's coming up on the slip road here is it going to see that van let's see how long it takes for it to see the van 
There, it's, it's picked up on the van. It's slowing down now. It started to speed up then, the car did, and then it, and then it applied the brake to allow the van to join and keeping a safe distance back. So let's just see how it copes. It's coping really well. It's sped up a little bit. I'm really impressed with this feature. Um, I think this is probably the best part of the enhanced autopilot, this uh, navigate on autopilot. On A roads, on motorways, coping very, very well. We've got a slip road coming up here. I know that this car is gonna wanna merge here. So let's see how, right, it's, it's seen that car, it's seen it and it's slowed down. I've not done that. So it slowed down for that. The car slowed right down then to allow this car to join on that slip then. And is now picking the speed up. I'm really impressed actually that. It, it could have given us, it could have asked us to move over though. And naturally if we were driving then, I think I'd have naturally looked for a space in the other lane and merged across to allow the car in front to join. I'm really impressed that it's coping so well on these A-roads, actually. I didn't think for one minute that it was gonna like the A-roads, but uh, it certainly does. Part of the enhanced autopilot is auto park. So we're just testing. The car should be able to detect parallel parking spaces uh, if you're driving under 10 miles per hour. So we're driving slowly past a series of parked cars looking for a space. And what should happen is you should get a P appear on the screen to let you know there's an opportunity to parallel park. So one of the problems I'm having is the car just isn't giving me the opportunity to parallel park automatically. The car should uh, show you a P on the display uh, and then uh, you travel just past the cars that you want to parallel park between. It should allow you to engage the auto park function but just doesn't seem to be working. I'm traveling at 10 miles per hour to give the car an opportunity to allow me to parallel park, but it just isn't doing it. It doesn't seem to want to engage parallel park. And there's a, a perfect space there. I'm traveling well below the speed limit and it just isn't doing it. So I, I don't know what to do. If you've had a similar problem, maybe you can let me know in the comments below. Or if you think I'm doing something wrong, if you, if you think actually Cliff, you probably need to be doing something different to get it to work, then again, let me know. Uh, so here we are at the local supermarket car park, uh, driving round looking for spaces. So there's a gap between two cars here on the near side and we get nothing, no peas. No peas whatsoever. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a P to be displayed on the screen. So we'll go over here, there's two cars on our near side again. And we would hope that the car would see that there's a parking opportunity here, but nothing, no peas. So I think what we have to conclude here is the auto park is not functioning as it should be. Very disappointing, the auto park, both on the parallel parking front of things and on the bay parking, uh, or perpendicular parking as it calls it in the manual. It's just not happening. Um, so I think probably something need to report to Tesla to see if there's some kind of functionality problem either with my car or let me know if you've experienced something similar uh, with the enhanced autopilot functions. How are you getting on with your auto parking? Because I'm having no luck. So one of the great features with the enhanced autopilot is the summon function. So we showed you the forward and reverse functionality earlier, but now we're gonna show you Smart Summon. Now Smart Summon has greater functionality in the US, where you're able to call the, and summon the car from a distance away to you. Here in the UK though, the safety regulations permit that you have to be right next to the car. In still though, it's quite a fancy feature. And as I show you now, it means you can actually move a car from a parking bay should it be a tight bay, without just moving it forwards and backwards, you can actually move the vehicle to a specific location as long as you're right next to it. So let's show you how the function works now. You need to go into your app, select summon. Your car will then connect to your phone. Select smart summon and move the crosshair to the location where you want the car to drive to. So I'm gonna ask the car to make its way towards the end of this junction. You then simply need to press and hold the go to target button, which I'm doing. And as you can see, the car is now steering its way 
in the direction of the junction, all on its own. If you release your finger off the button at any point, the car will stop. That is part of the safety functions. Now it's going at a relatively safe speed there. I have got to stay with it and I can't release my finger. If I release my finger off the button, the car will stop. And we're moving now in the direction of the crosshair on the screen that you can see now. The car is making its way towards that location. It's just correcting its uh, path as it does so. It's really quite clever, this functionality. And there it's reached its maximum distance. But you can see we've travelled from a bay quite a distance away just using the Smart Summon feature. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it interesting. That's how we got on with Enhanced Autopilot for the last couple of weeks. If you haven't yet checked whether you've got it, get onto your settings, look in your app and see if you've had that feature added because it's quite possible if you've just got yourself into a new car, uh, you quite possibly have been given a two week trial of Enhanced Autopilot. Personally, I think the best functions within the feature are probably the auto lane change, uh, the navigate on autopilot. Uh, certainly didn't expect it to cope as well as it did with the A roads, that was a pleasant surprise. Uh, as you saw in the video, very disappointing, the auto park, neither were we able to get it to park in the bay or to parallel park on a number of streets, uh, despite our best efforts. So if you've got any ideas, maybe it's something I'm doing wrong, please let us know in the comments below. I'd be most welcome to hear those uh, because really keen to get that feature working. Really pleasantly surprised as well with the summon feature, how it was able to go in and out of the garage. If you're struggling with that, have a look at your settings because you might just need to reduce the parameters uh, that the car needs to deflect from in terms of objects in its way. If you reduce those really, really down, really, really far, then you're probably going to find you'll be able to get it in and out of some really tight spaces. As always, thanks so much for watching the videos. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and click that bell to hear about all our latest videos. Until next time, thanks again for watching.